Today, we're speaking with Jeremiah Williams, who enrolled and completed our construction management course. Welcome, Jeremiah. Hi. So as many of you know, we recently launched our Graduate of the Year um, contest. It's to highlight really outstanding graduates from the school, and I'm honored to announce that you, Jerry, are one of our finalists. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I just wanted to say that like, I really loved your submission. I think your story is um, something a lot of people can relate to. Uh, for a little bit of background to anybody who's listening and watching, you worked in construction in the commercial HVAC industry. Um, you moved your way up. You enjoyed your work going along the way. But as we all experience with a lot of different jobs, there's a certain point you hit, and that kind of is the limit and it's through no fault of your own it's just kind of nature of the work so in your case you decided to take matters into your own hands and pursue further education you said that you started out with some traditional colleges but they weren't working for you what were some of the issues you faced with those types of schools so uh you know coming from like the traditional school model uh you know doing you know, there's always a lot of talk about having your professor right there and having access to your professor and this, that, and the other, and all of these traditional schools offered online. And what I really, really found was I was watching a lot of pre-recorded classes. I was lot, reading a lot of uh, material that had been collected, and I, I had no access to the professor. If I did have a question, it would take a week before I got an answer back. I couldn't go talk to these guys. That was my biggest issue was, you know, you're you're paying this premium for this education. And it's all under the uh, assumption that you will directly have access to this college level professor. And that wasn't the case. I would wait through wait a week before I had access to it, get an answer or an email or anything. And so that was one of my biggest issues. Also, the timeline, like while I wasn't getting answers back, I would still have a my 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 assignments were still due. There were still due dates. So I'm waiting on this professor to get back to me and I would never there was no way that I could delay the assignment or anything. So that was the biggest issue that I saw. Cost too, that's always an issue, you know. Yeah, neither one of those are small problems to have. No. So, a friend recommended Ashworth to you. What did you initially think about it and what made you decide to give it a try? Because obviously you said these other classes, even though it was a traditional school, they were offering online. So did you have any worries that this would kind of be a similar situation? I wasn't worried that it would be a similar situation. Everything really actually looked appealing from the very start. Um, but, but I mean, I had some concerns, you know, because it's kind of a, while I definitely did have access to answers and people helping me through Ashworth, I was able to call in and get answers immediately or get, you know, get put on the right path. Um, just, it's kind of a, I don't want to say correspondence, but it's a little correspondency. Um, so that worried me a little bit, but then as I thought about it, like I was paying a premium for these colleges and literally I was getting the same thing from these traditional institutions that I was going to get from Ashworth college. And, uh, that's what drove the decision to make the switch. Uh, at first, like, I, like I said, at first I was a little standoffish about, the whole correspondence college thing. But once I re like saw the freedom in it, you know, the self paced and, uh, I am a go getter. So I knew that being motivated to do it wasn't an issue. Plus the, the price, you know, I mean, I was paying a premium to do the same thing that I Ashworth college was offering for a much, much a more affordable price. Plus the, uh, associate schools that you guys have, that was very appealing to me where I realized like, okay, you guys don't have offer, uh, past, past this degree. You don't offer anything in it, but there's these affiliate schools that you guys have that they offer those programs. And I can take these credits and automatically go someplace else and get the, uh, you know, the, the higher education if I had desired to do so. Um, also, two transferring credits was a little bit of a concern at first, 
but one of the colleges I went to was a traditional college. They were regionally accredited, all that stuff. And there were college, there are colleges out there that won't take their credits, you know, like, you know, having a guaranteed, if you come here, you get these credits. These are the colleges that you can transfer to. No questions asked. That was, there was a lot of, a. Uh, I took comfort in that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that isn't, um, you know, that is something to find comfort in because a lot of people do want to, you know, take the next step or, you know, take what they've already had and apply it to something different or new. And there is that reciprocity between our own little like family of schools. But also, as you said, if you want to, you know, transfer those credits over someplace else, you can do that. And they are accepted because we are accredited. Um, did you face, so, you know, obviously those things appealed to you, but once you did get started, like anything, you know, did you face any obstacles? And if so, how did you kind of overcome those? As far as like my education with Ashworth? Yeah. Um, so any of the obstacles I hit were uh, self-induced. So um everything was able to get fixed and answered uh, just by calling into the school and getting somebody to talk to or uh, sending in a message uh, through your guys's computer app. Um, yeah, just the flexibility of the school made everything very doable. When I could, uh, when I could run on it, I would dedicate myself to it and I would just hammer out anything that I could hammer out. And then when life would get busy, there was a couple family emergencies that took me away from it. I was able to get extensions on my degree. I don't know. Uh, as far as obstacles, it was pretty simple. It was pretty easy. I think the biggest obstacle I ran into was just, I hadn't written, I'd done a little bit of college prior. And I think when I did college, this is a long time ago, I'm old, but, uh, I don't think we did APA format and yeah. I think we did MLA it's format. It's always something that's a little tough and everybody yeah. has a different way of doing it. Who's using APA who I know when I went to school, I had to do Harvard and I had never done Harvard before. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I don't know what this is. And it can be really intimidating. It was actually my, my favorite experience with the college was the whole going from MLA to APA format, um, I had wrote in a really good paper and the teacher for the class had been like, hey, this is a great paper, but you didn't follow the guidelines. I'm going to give you a good grade on this one, but if your next paper is an APA, I'm going to, you're not going to pass it. And so that forced me into a place where I had to do a lot of research on how to do an APA. I called in the school, uh, one of the, I don't know, advisors, gave me a lot of good sources. They read through my paper and they said the same thing. They were like, this is a really good paper, but this is an APA. You didn't even follow the, you didn't follow the format. And that's the whole point of it is to follow the format. So it really pushed me outside of my comfort zone. And once I learned APA, I still kind of use like an APA format when I send out my construction documents. Like oh, wow. it taught me how to really write a professional sounding document. And so while sometimes I still feel like I'm just Jerry, Jerry Williams, the old construction worker, uh, I can send out an email that doesn't look like Jerry Williams, the old construction worker. I look like, uh, I know what I'm talking about, but I guess my confidence hasn't risen to the level that I perform at now. Wow, that's a really um, nice take on things. And I think that that's like a little extra that sometimes people find in their education that maybe going into it, they weren't expecting, you know, you expect the knowledge, the education, the degree or the certificate that comes with it, but you don't necessarily have this expectation that you're going to feel different about yourself oh, yeah. in a very positive way. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know how many papers I wrote for you guys. I wrote, I saved everything. Maybe one of these days I'll go home and count them all, but my, my spelling increased drastically. My, uh, you know, my ability to give somebody else information or receive information, uh, I mean, it just all improved drastically. I was actually going to ask how, because you mentioned some of this in your application, and I was going to ask, you know, how do you apply some of those softer skills or maybe those less job-specific skills, but how do you incorporate those into your daily life or your job itself? Well, writing documents, writing uh, uh, change orders and, and uh, 
using Word. I just went to a project where there was a piece of equipment that wasn't working and I was able to, I took your guys, one of the hardest classes I took was uh, your Microsoft Word class. Like I had no idea that Microsoft Word was so complicated. And I was able to generate a report on uh, facilities uh, deficiencies and I was able to link pictures and videos and and it was a very professional document and I was able to send it. Uh, it, it helped me, the hospital, it's a hospital and their project manager is the busiest guy I've ever met in my life. And one of the values that he sees in our company and what I bring to him is he, to get a budget, he has to take the information that I give him and disperse it to people who don't really understand the work. And some of the skills that I've adopted in the past is I know how this mechanical equipment works. And now that I know how to write a good paper or use Microsoft Word to its full extent, I'm able to create a document that he can directly take to a uh, an admin person or somebody who creates a budget while they don't understand the mechanical equipment. I have the language skills and the Microsoft Word skills to turn in this document that he doesn't need to edit. He doesn't need to He'll read it and he passes it off and I can do a document that's professional enough that this admin person can read it and then they can understand what I'm talking about and approve the budget or deny it. And so he's he's got that added value where he doesn't need to edit my my write ups if you can if I'm doing a good job of describing that. Absolutely. And I was going to say that really is such a valuable um skill to have in that you know it does make you more marketable in that you said you know somebody it it saves somebody else time and energy and it helps to just streamline a work process and everybody's lives a lot easier and it also you know it makes somebody want to come back to you for you know various jobs because they know they can trust you and that you know it's not just, you know, one aspect of the job. You're really going to, you know, fill in all the gaps that need to be done. Oh, yeah. Yep. I saw a need and I assessed it and I was able to take my skills from my prior job. And then I was able to take the skills from my education and I was able to bring value to somebody with that. And that makes me more valuable in that. He's actually offered me a job before. So, oh, wow. that's yeah, yeah. But well, speaking of job offers, you said even before you finished, you applied for an open position elsewhere, you know, from your previous job as a project manager and got the job. And then a year later, um, you got an even better job offer. Do you think Ashworth helped you gain these positions? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, the fact that I was pursuing an education, a lot of guys that are in field construction uh, talk about making a move to the office. but there's a, you know, a lot of people talk about it, but they don't do anything to improve their situation. And the fact that I was pursuing an education showed other companies that I was doing something to change my situation and that I had a commitment to it. Um, the flexibility that Ashworth gave me allowed me to make that transition. Uh, if I was going to a traditional college, I think it would have been possible but it would have been much more difficult because that was when I made that switch originally, that's when I kind of took one of my breaks was because I was going from field construction into a project management position. And while I, I could do it, I was just like, I put school, I wouldn't say on the back burner, but I put it off to the side a little bit because I was like, I need to focus on this right now. This is a whole new world to me. Uh, I found that I had the tools to do it, but the flexibility that Ashworth gave me allowed me to make that transition more comfortably, where some people may have had to stop going to school to comfortably make that transition. I was able to dial back. I stayed in school. I still did assignments, but where I was hammering stuff out before, maybe not so much. You know, I still read. I still did my book work. Yeah, that was actually another question I had, you know, so you got these two improved jobs before, you know, you were even done. A lot of people might have said, you know, well, my prospects have already improved. So, you know what, I really don't need to finish this. Um, but you didn't. You continued. So what kept you motivated to continue and just keep going forward with it? I'm a, I'm a worker. 
and uh, I finish what I start. There's not too many things that I start that I just, I couldn't live with not doing that. Plus two, you never know where life leads you. I might do this and it's not right for me. And uh, I might decide to go do something else. There's a lot of other things you can do with a construction management degree. You can become a maintenance manager. There's all kinds of different things. And so this is a, a card in my pocket, right? This is a tool. This is something that I can use in case I decide that project management isn't what I want to do. And if I've got a, a three quarter of the way degree, that's not going to get me anywhere. You know, having a degree, finishing it shows employers that I can finish what I start. A very, very key skill, I think, also in and of itself to have, because it does, like you said, it shows employers you can start or you can finish what you start. And those aren't always qualities we find nowadays, um, especially, I think, with the pace of the world and, you know, just everything, how things have changed and shifted. It's really important to see that kind of commitment um, from an employee and that gives employers confidence. And I think one of my favorite parts from your submission was where you said you were able to move up from a difficult and unpredictable job yes. to a sustainable and, and stimulating position. And now you have so much more control over your life. That's definitely a goal I think we would all have, or at least hope to have. What kind of impact has that made on you overall, personally, professionally, and how did Ashworth kind of factor into that? I mean, it's just, it gave me the ability, I mean, just like I said, it gave me the ability to go from an unpredictable job where I'd be working 84 hours for three months and, or I might find myself working in the middle of nowhere for months on end to, I can, I stay busy now in town. I'm not living in the middle of nowhere. Uh, with field construction, I might be eight, working 84 hours a week, one week, and I might be under, unemployed the next month, you know? Um, there's no more of that. Like there's balance in my life where I can have some predictability. Uh, I'm not going to hear next week, hey man, we got to have you go out of town for six months. We'll see you later. You know, it, it's, while I do have to travel for PM work, it's where, where when I was a uh, field construction guy, it was months. Now I go out of town for two days here and there. So it allows me to be home more. Uh, my original career switch would, I mean, career switch might not be the right word cause I'm still in construction, but my first PM job was, uh, for the same yearly dollar amount that my job as a foreman superintendent was. So I was able to go right into a good paying career without the threat of living out of town, without the threats of the ups and downs to just a stable, decent job. So yeah, that, that's what's called. That people that. Don't always have. So that's really, I'm glad that that, that you were able to receive that mm -hmm. and, you know, be in that position where I just, I loved how you worded that about, you know, it's a stimulating position. So that's oh, another yeah. thing. I'm just like working in construction, especially being out in the field, you know, obviously there's some repetition to it. I'm sure, you know, there are specific things that you do every day, but you know, being out in the field, like you said, there's a lot of change. There's a lot of transition. There's, you know, one week you're doing one thing or you're in one place. Another week you may, it may be a totally different scenario. Mm -hmm. um, and so people might think that maybe being in an office setting that that wouldn't be as stimulating, but no, it's insane. Find the opposite. It's insane. Yeah. Just so and backtracking a little bit with some of the skills I got from the school is like learning how to be proficient in Excel. Um, you know, I, I signed up to be a project manager, not an estimator. Um, and just very quickly, employers saw that I had the skills to estimate. They taught me to estimate. I, I'm project manage. I estimate jobs. I work with clients. Uh, if you're not careful being a project manager, you blink and the day's over. Like, it's insane to me. I definitely thought being, and I'm not stuck to a desk. When you're in construction, you're walking around quite a bit. Uh, 
going to jobs, talking to people, doing stuff. Um, but there's just, there's no, uh, your job is not just, uh, linear. It's not singular. Mm -hmm. It's, it encompasses a lot of different things as a construction manager and as a project manager. Um, I hope I didn't go off on too much on a tangent and get off track with no, it. No, not at all. No. What are some of your favorite projects that you've worked on or what type of projects do you especially like to do? Um, so my favorite project to date is it was super stressful. It was super fast paced, but it was awesome. So I live in Anchorage, Alaska, and there's a restaurant, the nicest restaurant in Anchorage. It's 22 stories up. It's called the Crow's Nest. And they had a really old piece of mechanical equipment, an air handler, uh, that we had to replace. And the logistics of this, the, the air handler weighed about 5,000 pounds, and it was in a mechanical room. So it's not just something that we could set a big crane up and pick it off the top of the, room, the building and then set a new one on there. I had to have crews completely dismantle this 5,000-pound air handler, and then I had to hire uh, moving companies to move it up to the mechanical room 22 stories up the thing is what made this project really hard was it was a design build so we we drove the design i drove the design uh but the the restaurant had to be closed and the restaurant said we're only going to close for three weeks and like it was a once we started the ball rolling, they sent all their staff home for three weeks. We had to have the old piece of equipment dismantled, demobed, and have the new piece of equipment installed and tied in and all the controls working and everything within three weeks. Wow. And, and if we didn't, the most expensive, fanciest restaurant in Anchorage, Alaska was not going to reopen on their scheduled date. No yeah. pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. But uh, we nailed it. We knocked it out of the park. You know, um, their return customer. That must have been incredibly satisfying. I mean, I'm sure it's satisfying when you complete any job, but especially one that's so high pressure and has so much, like, no pun intended, like weighing on it, you know, yeah. to, to do that successfully really has to be very rewarding. Yeah, we did about, uh, so we did about $500,000 worth of work in three weeks. Yeah. And there was a lot of pre-planning that happened before it. It's not like we just jumped right, you know, three weeks, you know, yeah. there, but that's, that's part of what made the three weeks work is I was able to develop schedules. And this is all stuff that the construction management program goes over. It's the scheduling and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I was able to develop schedules, timelines, durations for all my contractors. I was able to figure out how my budget was going to play into everything. Um, uh, but yeah, that's probably the best, my my favorite uh, project that I've ran so far. There have been several others that were pretty close, but that was that was the scariest. But that's yeah, that I the funnest. Say so. I mean, yeah. I don't I don't know a lot about the field, but I mean that sounds pretty intense. If we weren't able to, uh, there's a term called liquidated damages. So if we weren't able to open the restaurant back up within the window of work we were responsible for their costs. We were responsible for the money they could have lost. Yes. So no pressure. <laughs> Three weeks. Uh, well, at least you got it done and it was done the right way. Um, you know, that's, and I'm glad that you are able to apply those skills that you learned through Ashworth to that job. And I'm, I'm sure the restaurant was very appreciative too. Yeah, they actually, uh, once the job was all over, they gave uh, me and my significant other a, a big, huge gift certificate. All expenses paid dinner. And yeah, it was very expensive, but I didn't have to pay anything. So it was pretty sweet. Definitely worth it. <laughs> what did your friends and family and coworkers think when you decided, you know what? Hey, I, I've had enough of this. I'm going to go back to school and kind of take myself on a different path. They all knew I was going to do it. I'm a bulldog, you know, uh, I get pretty hard headed. And once I get into something, I'm not going to stop. Once I get my teeth into it, even the owner of the company that I worked for when I was still in construction, he was like, once you get your teeth into this, no one's going to stop you. And, uh, 
everybody believed in me. Everybody knew it. Everybody, as soon as I said I was going to do it, everybody's were like, well, Jerry's going to be gone for two years doing school. You know, he's not going to be out drinking beers with everybody. He's not going to be doing any of that. And I didn't, you know, I focused on school and I got it done and everybody believed in me. And, uh, yeah, just tons of support, That's especially for my significant other. There were tons of time where I just would come straight home from work and sit sit in the computer room and work on the computer all weekend sometimes but that's what it took definitely and you know it's not that people can't do it on their own there are some people you know who that's just what their situation is but i think it makes it a little bit easier and maybe even a little bit more gratifying when you have that support so i'm really glad you were able to have that especially with with your mentality and your approach to things about like you said like being a bulldog and just going for it you know a lot of people would vacillate and be a little bit nervous about it but it seems like you know you get your mind set on something and you know you're going to accomplish it so for anyone who's maybe considering Ashworth or a change in their lives and wondering if Ashworth could be a right decision for them, but they're not really sure, they don't necessarily have your gusto, what would you recommend to them? Oh, take it slow. You know, don't try to bite it all off at once. You got the rest of your life to do it. Not the rest of your life, you know. Uh, but commit to it. It's incredibly gratifying. And once you do it on your own, there's nothing, nothing more empowering. Like you have educated yourself. Like that is incredibly empowering. Um, it is. It's absolutely worth it. It is tough. It's hard. And it's not necessarily like the individual classes are hard. It's making that commitment that's hard but you reap what you sow and if you make that commitment and you tie into it i mean the sky's the limit you know you can improve your life situation like but i don't know what else would sell somebody on it personally you know like you can change your situation you have the power to change your situation it's in it's in your hands you just gotta lock down and do it it's a lot of reading it's a lot of reading but you're you're gonna sharpen all your tools you're gonna come out of the better of the other end, a better person, a smarter person, a more capable person. Um, and if you commit to it, you'll find that you will train your own discipline too. It's an exercise in discipline coming home and reading, you know, every night a little bit, you know, another piece of advice too, that I would give is don't try to do, uh, do it all at once. Take small bites, you know, while I did have lots of four, five, six hour cram sessions and study sessions. I would also, when life was over, uh, over cumbersome and I had stuff going on, I would come home and I'd read 20 minutes. And that's what I had that day, right? Like a hundred percent looks a little different every day. So sometimes that's reading. For good quote. That's fantastic. I love yeah. that. I may steal that. <laughs> yeah, do it, do it. I'm pretty sure I stole that from somebody. <laughs> But it's so true, though. No two days are alike. And no. sometimes, you know, you only have so much to give. And another yeah. day you may have 10 times that amount. And there's nothing wrong with either one. It's just it's what the situation is at any given time. It is exactly. And so some days 100 percent is uh, two pots of coffee and a six hour cram session. Something bad happens and life is tough and 100 percent is 20 minutes. But what matters is putting in a hundred, a hundred percent and getting to that finish line, you know, understanding that this isn't going to be a six month task. If you're going to do it right, do it right. You know, that, that was one thing that I tried to do too, is like, and be mobile. Like, like I said, I'm a bulldog. Like sometimes when I get something in my head, it's really hard pressed to get me to change. And I was like, I want a 4.0. I'm going to get a 4.0. And you want to know what? I was nailing it. I was doing good. But there were a couple of classes that uh, were like, you know what, man? Maybe you're not going to get a 4.0. <laughs> and I might have been able to, like, just spend a bunch of, t bun bunch of time to achieve that. Not that I didn't get a good grade. But uh, I accepted, oh, you know what? I did my best. A B is okay. Right? I even got some 
not on the finished class, but on some tests, you know, oh, I got a C on this. You know, I've got all this stuff ahead of me for school. I got a C here. I'm allowed to retake a test. And another thing that I forgot about is I love the fact that you can retake tests. I think that's phenomenal. Uh, and I think that's good for education. If you really care about somebody learning something and they have the drive to retake it, that's important. Right. So now I can look at a test that I didn't do good on and then I can evaluate it, study again, look at where I didn't do good and retake it and get a B or an A. So I really that's like that. So true. That's yeah. that's a prime example of learning, especially learning from mistakes. Not that, you know, it, it's bad. Like sometimes mistakes are useful and we can learn from them. And I think that that's a really good way because, I mean, a lot of times you get a test back, you get a certain grade. It's maybe not your best, but, you know, you kind of leave it at that. Mm -hmm. But in having that option to go back and do it again it kind of reinforces the the stuff that you already knew that you did do correctly or that you did know, but it also helps you to refocus and go back to the things that maybe you didn't get the first time around and then do the second time. Yes. Yep. I would agree with that 100%. That's great. Well, that's it for me. Do you have anything else you want to add or, or tell anybody? Um... I mean, just really appreciate uh, the education that I got from Ashworth. It's helped change my life a lot. Um, I really appreciate the cost. Uh, there were colleges that I was going to. I went to one college. I'm not going to name any names, but there was one college where I think the overall education was over $80,000, and I couldn't even get a hold of the professor. Like I would watch pre-recorded videos from the professor from the prior year or prior years, whatever it was. Um, and they would just talk about their level of education and what they could do, but I couldn't even access this person. And it was, uh, the cost was egregious. It was $475 a, a credit hour. And that's kind of what made me realize to go to Ashworth was I was paying this premium for what I'd be doing at Ashworth, you know? And it was actually easier to get a hold of people at Ashworth than it was at the traditional school. It was easier to get a hold of the tutors. It was easier to get a hold of whomever I was trying to get a hold of. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, I wanna thank you guys for that and giving me the ability to get a education affordably. That's the biggest thing, honestly. I mean, as not that money's everything, but money's a big thing. But it's important. I mean, it, it factors into everything. And we do know that, you know, not everybody is in the same financial situation. And we don't think that people should have to go broke or have to remortgage their house or Lifelong sell debt. their car to, to, just to be able to get an education and, and further their career or their life. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's incredibly affordable. And the self-paced learning is, if you got a job, that's what you need. You need to be able to push and pull your efforts according to your life. And, and there's just a lot of things that I appreciated about the school. And those are two of them. Well, we appreciate you sharing those things with our, our listeners and our watchers and with us. We really appreciate it. It's a nice reminder of the work, why we do the work that we do. So thank you. Thank you.